Welcome to another interview in our FM Expert series. Today I'm joined by Adagoke Oyuo. Hi Adagoke, how are you? Hi Bess, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. Uh, Adagoke is joining us from Sweden today. And Adagoke, you're going to talk to us about some ideas around how we can rethink the workplace. Uh, and I know this is an area that you're a specialist in as a facilities and workplace consultant. So I am going to hand over to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much um, for this privilege. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Um, yeah, firstly, I would like to um, talk about workplace and um, try to give us um, an understanding of what the workplace really is. Yeah. And the way I like to explain what a workplace is, um, I never explain the workplace without mentioning the word ecosystem. Okay. Uh, because um, for me, I see the workplace as an ecosystem that comprises of um, a careful balance of people that's one, process, um, place, and develop to support people and the nature of their work. Yeah. So um, it's very important to know that the workplace um, comprises of a lot of things and not just the, the office. Yeah. So um, that's why um, we hear people saying things like the workplace is a journey and not just a destination. Yeah. So it's um, very, very um, important for us while talking about how to rethink the workplace it's for us to go back to the drawing book and think about what is the workplace yeah. and um, so today um, it's everything I'm going to say is going to be um, centered about um, around the workplace being a journey and not just a destination okay so when we talk about yeah cool when we talk about the workplace um, you know we could say an office um, and we can still talk about um, a workplace so an office is a place where yeah I do my job um, but the workplace um, is something much bigger than an office. So an office is the space where I do the work. But a workplace could be, um, you know, it could be the office. It could be wherever I feel like working on a particular day. You know, oh, um, That's my bad, sorry. I didn't turn my phone off. Apologies, ignore me. <laughs> no worries. So can we go on? Yeah, please. Okay, cool. So that's it. So, um, yeah, you know, we're taking, we're taking the workplace, um, you know, the organizational mindset of um, people um, of the organization needs to be changed. Um, and I think that's the starting point yeah. um, for us in rethinking the workplace. Um, because right now with the um, present pandemic going on, um, we can see that uh, the way of working for people has really evolved really fast. Um, flexibility is a very, very, very key word right now. Because yeah. people want to be much more flexible with the way they work. Yeah. Um, people have um, recently found out that they prefer to be home, um, to spend three days at home or two days at home. And, you know, that's something that never happened before. No, no one ever talked about it no. uh, for years. And, and, and okay, it's because there wasn't, I think a lot of the reason is there wasn't trust. You know, mm -hmm. there were so many organizations who didn't think people would be able to be effective. Uh, they didn't think people would be able to get their work done. And this has forced them to trust because they've had no yeah. choice. And it has changed things, hasn't it? Yeah. So, really yeah. interesting. Yeah, brilliant. And that's why um, we would go into the opportunities yeah. uh, that the pandemic has opened up for organizations and, you know, for work, workplaces. And the first thing is trust. Yeah. Because right now, we can see that um, um, line managers, um, bosses, and other people now begin to trust their employees um, to work um, by themselves, you know, with less supervision, because um, we can't really, you know, supervise someone working from wherever they're yeah. working. So now the trust levels has really increased. And, you know, that's why a lot of people begin to say things like, um, I feel more productive now because yeah. now I, I feel more engaged. Um, I feel that um, whatever I do, my, my line manager will be okay with it. You know, I don't really need to do um, things the way it was done before. Mm -hmm. And next thing will be um, user centricity and people centricity. So now rethinking the workplace and moving forward, um, we need to focus on people. And um, I think that's going to be something that's going to be very, very important. Um, moving forward because you want to bring people back to the workspace um, when the pandemic um, slows down or reduces yeah. to a very bare minimum. Um, and what's going to be very important are two, two things. That's the well-being of the employees yeah. and the safety of the employee. 
of their employees. So I think that those two factors are going to be very, 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 very important. Yeah. That's why it's going to be very important to um, focus on the well-being. When talking about the well-being, we want to know how people um, feel at work. Um, and that's very important. So um, I would be saying that it's very important for us to put people first yeah. in designing the next workspace because um, it's a big fact that the workspace and the workplace it's, is really going to change um, after the pandemic. And a lot of organizations, I get calls from people um, talking about um, conversations like how do we want to you know, prepare the workspace for people to come back? And it all comes to people. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you, you want to bring people back to the workspace. So how can we make them happier? How can we touch on the um, well-being in the workplace and not leaving out safety? Because uh, there was a survey I, I had a look at recently, and I saw that almost everyone was very um, concerned about their safety at the workplace. Yeah. So like, when the green lights, when I get the green light that everywhere is safe, I would come back to the workspace, to the workplace. So that's very important. And next thing, um, the office should be re redesigned to be a destination where employees come to learn. One, exercise their cultural connections, um, where they can also innovate and also um, create new things. So um, the workplace won't just be a place where I have to go to every day. It's going to be a place where I feel I should be to be at the best of my job or the best of my work for a particular day. And I guess it's one of the places you go to, whereas exactly. before it was the only place. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's not going to be a place I have to go every time, but I just need to go when I have to do some really special things um, that has to do with, you know, um, I need to learn from a, a colleague. I need to um, have a really, really brainstorming um, um, session yeah. with a friend, you know, and I want to just connect with people. Yeah. So that's very important. And this leads us to, you know, the workplace experience. Workplace experience. So you want to bring people back to the workspace. We want to redesign the workspace. You want to think about their experience in the work, workplace. Yeah. And that is a very, very key factor in rethinking the work workplace. And in creating the workplace experience, you know, um, that has a very good impact on employees. We also need to understand the needs of the employees. Now we want to know, because um, you know, it's a fact that the needs of people have changed yep. in the past four, four months or five months. Um, so now we want to go back to them and say, okay, um, this is how the workplace was before. How do you want the workplace to be? And um, you know, there's been a lot of surveys going out on LinkedIn, on different um, professional networks. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good start. But organizations really need to understand what their people need. Do you, know, do you not think, though, um, if you're an employee, I mean, your, your background is, is going to help you answer this more. But if, but if you think of a standard person who doesn't have your experience and you say to them, look, the workplace has changed, the way you work has changed, what do you need? And you ask them the question, people will often answer that based on what they have seen and what they've experienced in the past, mm -hmm. not what the future could look like. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost employers need to give them a, a vision as to what that could look like to them, for them to see that, to realize the options are there. Does that make sense? Cause I think a yeah. lot of people wouldn't be able to answer that question easily. Yeah. So um, that's why um, the way I do my things, I try to leave out the solution yeah. and look at the challenges. So um, we're looking at what are the challenges we're facing, not the solutions, not what we want yeah. um, the workplace to look like. So, um, yeah, I want, I want to have somewhere where I can, you know, yeah. chill out during the day um, in the workplace. Um, and because I feel like sometimes I feel just overburdened. I feel tired of my work um, from a very busy day or the first five hours of work was really tense. Yeah. And I just need to log out and just be on my own, you know. And that's something, and that's something that also touches the well-being, because at, when you're home, working from home, people can actually take thirty minutes off. Yeah. And um, I just want to sleep. Yeah, everyone, some people do that now, yeah. but you wouldn't go to your line manager and tell him, "Oh, uh, I just want to sleep." So I'll be back with you guys. You know, it's something that happens. Or you just walk out and take, um, you know, sun bath for a while and go back to work. You know, that's um, it. All comes back to trust. You know, yeah. so we focus on the opportunities instead of the of the solution or what we want. So that's um, a very very good um, starting point. And you know, when asking these questions, 
it's also important to put the strategic um, direction of the organization in front of um, the whole thing. So where does the organization want to be? So yeah. we're going to ask lots of questions on, on how the um, organization wants to be in the next five years, um, you know, um, with the fact that things are changing. Yeah. So it's going to be very important to also focus on um, four things. Um, one, um, when asking questions, one, how attractive is the workplace to you? Um, are you attracted to come back to the workplace? Or if no, um, what will make the workplace more attractive to you? Then yeah. you hear people saying different things. Um, yeah, I just want to be 10 meters um, apart from the next person working <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, and different fun stuff. But it's, um, it's a very, very big competence of um, workplace managers, FM um, guys, to really understand the things which should actually go into the strategy um, going forward. And moving forward, we could also talk about productivity. Um, ask questions centered ar around productivity. Yeah. Ask questions um, centered around efficiency. Yeah. And also asking questions um, centered around sustainability. And I think um, in moving forward in rethinking the works, um, workplace, I think um, HR, there needs to be a, a, a form of synergy between um, departments in the workplace um, or in an organization that uh, normally wouldn't be working together. Yeah. For example, HR, um, that's the people department, um, IT, yeah. the real estate guys, and FM. Um, I think these four um, departments are the future of the organization, you know, of the future of work. So if four of them can come together, you know, think on how to harness the needs of the employees, the needs of the um, organization, you know, it helps to rethink the workplace and the workplace design yeah. to, um, you know, um, come to a very, very um, good goal and then they form the strategy. Yeah. So um, that's um, going to be my... Wow, you've, my, given my, us, you've given us some really good points there. And I think take. actually, yeah, I, I, think, I think the point you said about um, not asking people for their solutions, as in what does it look mm -hmm. what do they need, what are their challenges, I think that's probably one of the biggest takeaways people uh, need to think about because I think we often frame mm -hmm. questions wrong, don't we? Yeah. We don't get the answers, then help us then provide exactly. that's going to work. So mm -hmm. um, really useful. You've got, you've got loads and loads of ideas. I know people can follow you on LinkedIn for, for some more of your thoughts, but um, we can look at our time and I knew it would go quickly. See, even with my phone ringing and the distractions, uh, um, I apologize. <laughs> we're, now, we're now past 12 minutes. So listen, oh. I'm going to say for now, uh, to you in Sweden, thank you ever so much for, for joining us, for sharing your thoughts, for sparing my time. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, really appreciate that. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye. Have a nice week. Bye. <laughs>